nobody wants to get united. Like, what we gotta do is meet everybody in home 49th Street at the bench. You guys absolutely loved the first analysis video. So I figured, you know what? Let's take a look at another piece. If you guys would like to turn this into a series, let's get 350 to 400 likes on this video. And let me know in the comments down below, whose work would you like me to break down next? I'll, of course, continue breaking down some of my own pieces, but I'd love to hit up some people that you guys are fans of. And I think this series would be really good because a lot of my content currently is geared towards learning the basics of graffiti. This series can really help out more advanced graffiti artists. Now the piece we're going to be looking at today, I drew over on my Twitch. I got a link to that in the description. I'm going to show you guys one huge fundamental mistake I made in this piece, but that'll be later in the video. So without further ado, let's get into the analysis. Now I was really excited for this piece because I really wanted to progressively get more wild style with the hybrid, as well as make it more organic and less geometric. And then with the last letter, I wanted to finish off with more of a mix, a blend between the two, more similar to the G. So with the G, we have a lot going on. We have this cut in right here that it will be used in order to teach the viewer that, okay, we're going to have an interior detail that does something like this later in the piece. And we show it again right here so like that we can use this for letter uniformity later. Now the G is right here. You have the rounded part that comes over, swoops up, and then we have the hook right here for the G, and it swoops back down for that extra box that you sometimes see on a G. We also have a double structure G where it's just a secondary structure. Now typically with double structures, the second structure actually isn't the focal point. It's more so of an assist. So you have the front part of the G, it comes straight down, and then inward back up for the hook and back down the way our first G did. Now this second structure would be used in order to swoop back and connect to this back portion of the 3D of the R. Not only that, it's suggested that the structure pops out over here for the R, behind the cylindrical form. We're also able to connect the bowl of the R to the front of the cylindrical form, which was quite a bit of fun, and as you can see, it wraps around towards the back. We were also able to align the cylindrical form straight down into this portion of the G to show that these two structures are shared between the G and the R. So you have this more geometric area of the structure, which is definitely part of the G, and then this organic area fills the inside of it and wraps around it, and that right there is going to belong to the R. Now both of these actually belong to both letters because it's shared, but it's more a matter of showing the viewer what goes where. It's to define structure and keep that uniformity. Now the bowl of the R shoots forward this way and we actually have the leg of the R pop out real strong in this area. Now this is used as an anchor point. It's used to really, really pop out at the viewer and tell the viewer, okay, look, this is structure. Now I've always wanted to do this thing where I have the structure coming out from within the organic shape. So we took the opportunity here. As you can see, we have organic shape coming in from the more geometric area of the bowl of the R, it swoops down into the leg and swoops down again past the leg. And if you notice, this little webbing comes underneath this rounded portion and pops out to connect here. So there has to be a solid inside of here and that solid shoots out from the organic form, making itself present, giving us more structure with this firm 3D. And then we cut into that 3D and shove some more organic form kind of slithering inside of it and coming out of it, creating the rest of the leg of the R. That was a blast to do. I had a lot of fun with that. Now we have the struggle of trying to connect the eye. Initially, I really wanted the eye to connect in this area, but no way I did it was going to work in a way that made sense. So I had to push the eye further back. This is a two point perspective piece. As you can see, we have a lot of receding lines shooting this way, and then we have some receding lines shooting the other way. I decided, you know what? Let's cut into the R and let's make the 3D the letter structure of the eye. And that's precisely what we did. The eye shoots back into the second perspective. And with this, we're able to really exaggerate the letter structure and show a lot of depth with this. This gives us ample room in order to do the rest of the letter I. Now remember, our initial intention for this piece was to get progressively more organic with each letter. So now we're in the letter I, where we have to get really organic. We slice out a huge circle and dig deep in depth going to the first perspective in order to suggest the tittle of the eye. We then do the top right half of the eye, which has some geometric structure underneath it. Now, because the letter I is really vertical, we can do whatever we want with that verticality. That verticality is really simplistic and it's really easy to understand. So that verticality, we can go ahead and abstract quite a bit because once again, as long as we stay vertical with the silhouette, we're set. And that's exactly what we do. We shoot a lot of dripping organic form down the verticality of the letter. And then once we hit the bottom of the letter, it kind of sludges and slouches all about it. Now the bottom of the letter, we could go ahead and shoot it back into 
the second perspective, but this is going to limit how much room we have for the left side of the bottom of the letter. I didn't want this to happen, so I wanted it to run parallel to our first two letters. So how do we do this? We shoot the bottom towards the first perspective. This means the eye twists. It has one section going this way and the other section going that way. And that means that the center, the verticality of the letter, has to spin and twist between the two. And we kind of indicate that here with this area. We shoot some more geometric shape throughout the bottom of the letter I. We pierce through the bottom and we jet this back into the second perspective and we put its 3D going to the first perspective. This is just a nice contrasting form to the bottom letter structure of the eye. From here we do exactly what I did and said on the first piece where we need some areas to be a little bit more simplistic that way the viewer's eye can have a resting spot. So make the bottom pretty simplistic. Sure we do a lot of twisting and turning but overall it's pretty simplistic with a lack of detail. The eye has an immense amount of detail if I were to paint this it would have even more. So we have to keep things around it pretty simplistic which is why the R is also pretty simple. And you'll see later that's why the M is also pretty simple. So from here we shoot the letter structure upwards. This is not an extension, this is letter structure. And we have the 3D jet back this way. This is actually a really important part of the letter I. And it plays a huge role into the letter M as well. We do the same thing over here with the rest of the letter I. We shoot it past this portion. That way it can hold up the letter M. And as you can see, we take this opportunity to have a lot of repeating elements. We go ahead and do something similar to what's happening over here. We do it over here. What's happening over here? We do it over here. And this little detail, we do it over here. This is just to bump up the letter uniformity and similarity. The entire lower half of letter distorted M is organic and we are slowly progressively getting less organic and more geometric. Now because it's organic, we have the liberty, the luxury to wrap it around this letter structure of the eye. We cut into the three of the M, that way we can do the same thing we did over here, and the same thing we did over here. And we wrap that organic shape directly into this more geometric shape, the same way we did around the R. Now because the eye is so detailed, I want to go ahead and simplify things. If this were painted, there'd be a lot of shadow and a lot of texture in this area, so it wouldn't have a lack of detail, it would just have an easier detail to look at. We come up for the little serif of the M, and we actually repeat kind of what's happening over here, and what's happening over here, right in this area of the M. As you can see, this is uniform, and then it jets back the same way the G does. Because if this and this are similar, then that means this and this area are going to be pretty similar as well. That's how we tether the M to the R. Not only that, but we take it a step further because this part of the R jumps back and has a cut inside of it. And the same thing happens over here, where the M jumps back and it has a cut inside of it. And then we even have the same interior detail that we did over here on the G, we put it right over here on the M. It's really subtle, but it happens. And if I were to paint this, I would probably do that same thing right here again again on the R. And if you notice, we do it once more right here on the M to really drive that detail home. Now comes for the mistake I made, the one fundamental mistake. This cylindrical form is too small. This cylindrical form should have been wider. It should have come out to at least here. This throws off the letter and name weight and the negative space management. So it's actually two fundamental mistakes. So this letter structure really should have dipped all the way back here and it, it could have been the same exact thing, just scaled upwards. So we could have come out this way. We could have dropped back the down and then came right into here. Now doing that would have bulked up the M. It would have eaten up a lot of this negative space and it would have made the M weigh more because right now the M weighs a little bit too little. Had these two perspective points not been so close to one another, I would have tried out maybe this leg from this other hybrid style I did, or even this one. And had I sketched this in Photoshop, that certainly would have been the case. I would have used one of these other legs. But with the two perspective points as close as they are, I would just bulk up the leg like I had said previously. And that would work perfectly fine. That would be okay. And the reason this mistake happened was because I was really afraid of the second perspective. If I can go back, if I oil paint this or if I paint this on a wall, you can bet yourself that this leg of the M is going to be a lot thicker. It'll be the same exact leg in every single way, just a lot thicker. Like I said in the previous piece, we do something very similar to this over here. We do it over here, except instead of this area being hollow, we fill it in with more organic shape. And then we wrap that organic shape around letter structure, more geometric shape. That way we can kind of pop this serif for the M back outwards. But that brings us to the end of this piece. This was a huge blast to do. I absolutely adored working on this and it was a massive learning experience. Right now I'm currently working on a five point perspective piece of graffiti and I can't wait to show that to you guys. Welcome back! People who are new here must be like, what is this guy's problem? He is, he's, 
<laughs> out of his damn mind. <laughs> what did you guys think about today's piece? Let me know in the comments down below. Also, don't forget, let me know who you would like me to break down and analyze next. And why isn't that like button blue? Remember, we need this video to get to 350 to 400 likes in order for me to turn this into a series. But check this out, for those of you guys who are new here, we come out with two videos a week, so feel free to subscribe and become part of the family. I'd love for you guys to become part of the community. As you can see down below, I chat with pretty much all of you guys who comment. I try to hit up everybody in my DMs. I really try to be integrated with you guys. So this is a great art community to be a part of. And also, if you're interested, we do a lot of artsy stuff like these oil paintings, the graffiti, we do all of that stuff over on my Twitch. So go down to the description and give me a follow. I understand some of you guys, you know, with the time differences, you can't always watch, but we have everything over there open to watch whenever you'd like. So if you miss a stream because of time differences, you can always watch it at your convenience. Anyway, guys, have yourselves a wonderful, beautiful day. I'll catch you guys in the next one, but until then, peace.